Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here. Welcome back to another video for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And in today's video, I am kicking off a series that I'll be putting together over the next few weeks, maybe even months, depending on how long it takes me to complete. And that series is a collection of guides showing you where to find every single Korok Seed. There are 900 Korok Seeds in total. Yes, you heard me correctly, 900. Technically speaking, you only need 455 to max out your inventory, but for those of you looking to 100% the game, then this series of videos will contain everything that you need. I'm going to tackle this by region. The map is split into various regions, and those regions are named by the tower that resides there. Some regions are bigger than others, so some guides will be longer than others. But for today, we are going to kick things off with the Great Plateau region. In this area, there are just 19 Korok Seeds in total, so it's a pretty manageable start. If you do enjoy this video, then a like would be super appreciated. Any questions, drop them down below. But enough introduction, let's get started. For the very first one, we are going to start at the northwest part of the map. And this one is over by the sort of burnt grass, that sort of brown grass that catches fire really easily. What you want to do is work your way up onto the top of the cliffs in the surrounding area and you'll then find a little ledge over on the right. Jump up there and this is one of the matching shape Korok puzzles. Basically in order to complete these ones you take a block that is misplaced and you use your magnesis rune to put it in place on the corresponding side so that it basically mirrors the other shape. I've actually already done this one so you can see the Korok right there but it's very simple. You basically take an out of place object, put it in place so that it matches and then the Korok will appear. After that, moving over to Korok Seed number two, this is located in the Forest of Spirits, just east of where we were. In the middle, you can actually see on the map, there is a very big log, this sort of hollowed out log, a fallen down tree. And the seed is at the very end, but this is basically one of those flower puzzles. You walk into this log and there'll be a flower on the ground. You simply walk into it, it disappears, another one appears in its place, and you then follow the trail. And then when you get to the end of the trail, a Korok will appear. Again, I've done this one, so I can't show you the actual process, but this is where it's located. For the third seed, you're going to go just south of where we already were, and this one's still inside the Forest of Spirits. If you go to this clearing here, you'll basically see a mound of rocks, this sort of mini tower, so to speak. What you want to do is climb to the very top of here, and at the top, you'll find a boulder. Typically, if there is a boulder out of place, you then want to pick it up, and when you pick it up, a Korok will appear from underneath it. This one is where you'll find number three. Moving on to Korok seed number four, this one is just northeast of the one we were just at, and this one is another one of those kind of hiding in plain sights. Another thing you want to look for are piles of leaves, typically brown leaves that burn very easily. So in this situation, just over here, in fact, if you guys ever paid attention to the E3 demo from, say, last year when they showed it on the Wii U, this is actually where one of the gameplay demos began, that log where there was basically a bow and you can actually do some cooking and stuff. But just in front of there, there is a tree with some roots reaching out to create this archway, and just underneath that are a load of brown leaves. Pull out a fire arrow or a bomb arrow if you don't have them and then burn the leaves and below that you will see a rock you can pick up. Pick it up and the Korok will appear. Moving on to the next one, this one is just north from where we are. You basically want to work your way out of the Forest of Spirits and you then get to the area where there's basically this sort of muddy lake and whatnot. The first thing you want to look for is this little archway with two rocks basically creating a little triangle. Underneath that is another boulder you can pick up and when you pick that one up you will find your next Korok. Then very close to that one, again moving a little bit further to the east, we're going to go over to this muddy pond. If you actually go and solve the puzzle here and get onto that platform, you can find both fire and ice arrows. But to the side of that, there is actually a log. And if you actually use your magnesis rune, you can see there is a boulder or a sort of metal sphere that is in the pond. And there's actually a chain that ties it to the log. What you want to do is grab the boulder, pick it up, put it inside the conveniently placed hole in the log. And when you do that, the Korok will appear. Again, I've done this one, he's already here, but you can see this is exactly what you need to do. Then after that, directly south, you're going to be going down to the pond that is just outside the Temple of Time. This is, of course, very near where you begin the game. When you come out of the Resurrection Shrine, you walk down the slope and you see the old man. Over here, however, there is a raised platform. And if you look down into the water, you will see a conveniently shaped circle made out of lily pads. Anytime you see shapes like this in the wild, it is invariably linked to Koroks. So what you want to do is go to the end of this pier here, dive off into the circle. And if you dive straight into the middle of it, the Korok will then appear. Moving on from there to the next one, we're now going to be going over to the Temple of Time itself. What you want to do is make your way onto the roof and climb to the very, very top. Climb all the way up to the top of the spire. Make sure you don't fall off because it can be quite dangerous. But when you get to the very top, you will see the leaves surrounded by the sort of fairy dust. So if you climb high enough up the spire, you can actually interact with this. And when you do, the Korok will appear. For the next one, we're going to be going over to the east side of the map, to the Eastern Abbey. For this one, you want to go to basically where the shrine is. Jump up on the very back wall that effectively overlooks the edge of the plateau and then look straight down and you'll find a metal door. Again, grab your magnesis rune, pick it up, throw the door away, you don't need it, and then you'll find a boulder underneath. You pick that one up, and once again, the Korok will show his face. 
Also, for the one after this, technically speaking, it's not part of the plateau. It is actually bordering into the next region. But given that it is so close, it's basically on this sort of line. I decided to do that one in this video. So what you want to do is straight from where you just were, paraglide down off the side, and you'll then find another metal door just down below. Grab that, move it, pick up the rock, and again, you'll find your next Korok. So we're going to factor that one into this particular region. After that, what you then want to do is work your way from the Eastern Abbey over to the hut near the woods. This is again where you'll find the old man where if you cook the right recipe, he'll give you a warm doublet in return. For this one, you want to climb on top of his house, go to the very top, the very kind of like edge of the house, and you will again find some more of that sort of leaves combined with fairy dust sort of thing floating around. Interact with that, and that is your next cork. After that, we are then working our way to the southern part of the plateau. This is actually directly south of the Shrine of Resurrection, also in the kind of snowy area, so put on your warm clothes. And for this one, again, you want to look towards the edge of the plateau, where you can basically sort of see parts of, say, the structure, castle, church, whatever it's supposed to be. And then if you go around to the edge, you can actually see another conveniently placed rock. Pick it up, and there is your cork. However, after that, there is another one very close by. You want to glide just down from where you were, and then drop off and you'll find this conveniently placed slab. This one is not metal, this one you'll actually need your stasis rune for, so freeze it and then hit it a few times so that way you can actually build up the energy and then once the stasis is removed, the slab will fly off and once again below that is another boulder, pick it up and there is your good old friend, the Korok. Next up, going a little bit further west over to here, in fact you can actually see this one on the map, you can actually see this little circle on the map basically made of these little rocks. These kind of patterns, whenever you see this, there is always one misplaced item. So very nearby you can actually find a rock, you want to go and grab that, pick it up, go and place it in the circle to complete the shape, and then your Korok will appear. For the next one, this is actually just a little bit south of the Kenamo Shrine. Basically what you want to do is go to the wall again, the very edge, and what you want to do is jump off, glide down, spin around, and land on this little ledge. This is another one of those missing shape puzzles, so the missing block is actually just around the side of this pillar. So pick it up, grab it, walk over carefully. Do note, of course, if you were to accidentally drop an item like this, these items do respawn later on, so you can just literally leave the area, load, maybe go to a shrine or something, and then when you come back it should be there. But grab the block, mirror the shape to the left, and then place it down, and there is your next cork. Moving on from there, directly from the Kenamut Shrine, what you can actually do is glide all the way down again to the very edge of the wall. You will see this big frozen icicle or this big frozen boulder. What you want to do is pull out your fire arrows. You'll need three fire arrows in total. You can also use bomb arrows, but you will find that if you get to the very last bit, the bomb arrow doesn't seem to melt the kind of important bit. So three fire arrows will melt this to its fullest. And then once you've done that, there's a little cloud of leaves and fairy dust. You can interact with this and that is your next Korok. Then from where you are, what you then want to do is go and glide your way down to the River of the Dead. You'll of course see there is a waterfall just down by the side, but just before that, there is a small pier, this small kind of bridge that is broken down, but there are a couple of sort of metal doors there. Now if you look down at the edge, you can actually see just below where this log is, there's another collection of leaves and fairy dust. However, you can't use the log to reach this, and also if you drop in the lake, then the cold temperatures will kill you very, very fast. You also won't be able to use your cryonis room for this either, because even if you place down a block and climb close, you still can't interact. So... What you need to do here is walk down the bridge, use your magnesis rune to grab one of the metal doors, bring it back with you and conveniently place it in the water so that it gets stuck between the log and the other kind of pillars. And then you create a platform that you can stand on. If you're unsure and think it might move, then you can throw stasis on it as well so that it freezes it in place. But jump on top of it, walk over and you can interact with that to reveal your next Korok. After that, another one of these ones that is technically speaking on the border of another region and it's a little bit outside the plateau, but given that it is so close, we're going to include it in this video. So what you want to do is just drop down the waterfall and then at the very bottom you will find this small collection of circular rocks. Now anytime you have a shape like this, what you actually need to do is grab a rock nearby and throw it in the middle of the circle. Now those rocks nearby are actually pretty heavy and if you try and throw them normally you will not be able to do it. So what you want to do is use your cryonis rune to freeze a block just between the circle and where you stand. And what you can then do is throw a rock on top of the ice block. It will then skate over the ice block, fall into the circle, and that will reveal your Korok. So again, just to kind of reiterate, so you can see it from a slightly better angle, this is what it should look like. And then last, but by no means least, in fact, this is probably one of the easiest ones. I probably should have started with this. This is actually just inside the Shrine of Resurrection. So you can actually fast travel there if you want to, or just climb back up and walk in. However you decide to do it, you want to go back towards the bed or the kind of stasis chamber that you woke up from, and inside that you'll find leaves, fairy dust, that's your next Korok, complete that, and you now have all 19 Korok seeds inside the Great Plateau region, which is a good start. So, for the time being, that's where you can find them, really hope you guys found this helpful, really hope you guys are looking forward to 
the rest of the series. As mentioned, this will probably take me a little while to record because there are so many of them. In fact, most regions have got a good sort of 70 or 80, so given that this has only been 19, then we've got quite a bit ahead of us. So I'm going to try and get them out as fast as possible, so do stay tuned. But for the time being, until the next one, thank you for watching, take it easy, catch you next time, peace out.